Hi guys, you're watching another DigiHill Photography tutorial. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be looking at creating a black and white portrait. Right, so use my base image. And you're using Lightroom. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly convert it to black and white in the treatment section. And I'm going to crop it um, to give it a more interesting angle. What I want the main highlight of my image to be is the face. So if we should have a look at that. Fab. Right, first up, um, I'm just going to bump the exposure up on this. Just nothing uh, overly exposed, just a nudge. I'm going to leave contrast where it is. I'm going to bring the highlights down a considerable amount. Um, I'm going to bring the shadows up. And the same for the whites. Not too much. There we go. By this point, you should be able to see. Um, more detail in your image most importantly what we want to be looking at are the eyes so if they're standing out then you know you're good to go so we're going to bring the blacks down a tad that'll be enough uh, clarity not too much clarity um, I think about 38 will do it for this one and for the tone curve if you look at the highlights what we're going to do is just bump these up and the lights we're going to bring these right up to about 71 uh, same for the darks they're going to come up to about 57 and just nudge the shadows up slightly as I bring up the shadows you'll see uh, more detail appearing in the hair fab right Right, so now we're going to look at the actual detail itself. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring sharpening up to about 84. And you'll be able to see there will be a considerable amount of noise in the image. But what I want is a smooth looking portrait. So to combat that, I'm going to bring up the luminance. to about that should do it and you can already see then even without uh, zooming in on a selection how smooth the face is starting to look right um, once you've created well once you've got this far Once you reach the color panel, even though it'll be highlighted uh, black and white, the color tones can still play quite a big part in your image. So if I have a look at red, for example, it's on minus five. Uh, if you remember, before I uh, turned the image into black and white, we had a red stripe backdrop and the lips were red. So if I bring the reds down, you can see it's starting to get darker. If I bring them up, it's starting to get light. What you want to do is find uh, a spot uh, with each individual color. I'm happy with the image uh, at the moment, the way it is. So I'm not going to play around too much with the colors. 
but if you have a play around on your image if there's anything you're not particularly happy with for example in this image uh, if I found the lips to be too light to uh, skin color and I can always bring them down also it's good for contrast so we've got that nice light face uh, nice tones and then we've got darker lips and then darker eyes so those facial features are gonna stand out and the most important with any portrait uh, is going to be the eyes as you can see they stand out So, job well done with that one. Uh, another thing with this portrait is the white square in the corner here. So, this one obviously, this one apply to all pictures is because it's in my picture. If you look at the image here, uh, I don't know about you, but it's very eye catching and it's not something that I want people to be looking at. So what I'm going to do is just crop it out. So if you have anything like this in your image, then just crop it out. So that way, now because the corner is dark, there's a dark stripe running through, the bright white patch isn't going to be catching my eye. Another thing to look at when you are creating a black and white portrait is still temperature and tint, because they will still play a part in the tones of your image. For example, if I bring the temperature right up you can see it's starting to get brighter I bring it way down it's a bit darker so I'm just going to bring it up to where it was and the same with tint if you play around with tint but like I said I'm happy with the way mine was alright so that's pretty much it um, I'm going to export the image And then we're just going to have a look at the difference between the two. So I'm going to get my base image open. And my post edit. Right, as you can see, huge difference. That's pretty much uh, a real simple way. It's very quick, it's very easy, just to get good results. If you're looking for a black and white portrait, um, with the portrait I got here, it's very well lit. Uh, there's a lot of detail, a lot of a light. Uh, nothing's too dark, nothing's too bright. So, depending on you, a portrait, play around with the settings it may you may produce different results uh, but obviously use stuff like whites highlights shadows if something is too dark uh, or detail is blown out and obviously use those to your advantage to get back that detail and you should end up with a result similar to this so have a go then obviously as usual you can enter into our uh, Flickr group, Photographer Universe. Um, or you can enter in on Photographer Universe, the Facebook page. But while I'm here, um, I think I'll take time to mention the Photography Learning Center. It's a new page set up by myself and my fellow photographer, Ethan McFenton, who you may know as Ed Mac Designs on YouTube. It's a new page. Uh, basically, we're going to be putting all our tutorials on this page. Uh, other tutorials from other photographers and other designers. So it won't just be all about us. You're more than welcome to join. Uh, if you do join and you make your own tutorials, feel free to post them on the timeline. And hopefully we can all learn something new. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So that if you just follow that method, you should end up with good results. Remember, the portrait I uh, was using was well lit. 
so settings are going to vary depending on what your portrait is going to be like if it's going to be a dark portrait you're going to need to increase stuff like shadows uh, perhaps we're going to need to bump the whites up um, perhaps the blacks are going to have to come up if it's if your portrait is uh, quite bright then obviously it's going to be vice versa so have a go see what you can produce and yeah pop the pop your image on our Flickr group or Facebook page and as always if we have enough entries on Flickr we'll create a little competition like we do with every other tutorial so that's pretty much it um, and that's it for me guys like I always say things may vary have a play uh, swap the settings around have a go don't be afraid to just you know push the boundary a bit I mean what's the worst that could happen on Lightroom you just have to reset the image so have a go and upload the results that's it for me guys ta -da.